All right. Whiskey friends far and wide. We are live. It is a malt Monday. I'm Eric, your humble malt muser. Hanging out again on a Monday. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, just poured myself a nice sherried whiskey. And I uh, got a couple lined up to sip on and chat about here on this late July Monday. <clears throat> we got some folks in the chat already, which is rad. I will uh, say hi to the folks who have joined us and then give you a little bit of a housekeeping update on why we are once again here on a Monday instead of our normal Tasty Tuesdays. So uh, first in the door... It's Tamika Ivy, Calumet City. I'm here for it, fam. What's up, Tamika? Nice to see you. Somewhere in central western Canada, it is Ben Demon Hunter. Monday indeed, sir. He's Texas Daniel H. Oh, man's putting in some work. <laughs> yeah, definitely, right? Uh, oh, boy, more Glenn Farkless passion <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe not. We will see. Well, Juan out on the Hawaiian Islands. What's up, bud? I'm catching you even earlier than normal this time. <laughs> nice to see you, buddy. <laughs> Great to have you in the house, Juan. Thank you for joining. Central Alberta, my bad. Alberta is east of the Rockies. I got to keep that in uh, in mind. I don't always get, know my Canada. British Columbia, Calgary, mm, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, and then the other small ones. Is that right? It's just off the top of my head. What up? London, calling in. What's going on, man? How are you, James? Thanks for stopping through. Yeah, so I threw together, we're just going to do a little impromptu-ish uh, live show. I don't have much of a format. I'm going to do some Glenn Farklesses tonight. Um, so housekeeping update. The reason that we are on a Monday again, I know I was off last week for some work-related things. This week, um, as some of you know who have been following the show for some time, I uh, my hometown is Milwaukee, and if you know anything about sports in the united states you'll know that the milwaukee bucks are in the nba finals and after winning this weekend are one win away from an nba championship which would be the first since like 1975. so uh game six is tomorrow night right in the middle of when i would be doing my whiskey show so i'm going to be heading up to milwaukee to hopefully celebrate and be part of a hell of a party um in my hometown so i will not be able to do me some uh whiskey show but next week we will be back with the regularly scheduled tuesdays now telex will again be live tomorrow night so i encourage y'all to uh, go show him some love uh, while he flies solo and we'll be back to the normal format for tasty tuesdays and all that on the 27th so i do got to uh you know I gotta go be part of be part of this experience as somebody who spent not only born and raised in Milwaukee, but spent upwards of three decades there. So, and now that I live in Chicago, that's just an hour and a half drive north of here. So, I will be out in the streets, hanging with my Wisconsin people. All right, we got some other folks in, which is good. Hey, Welsh Toro, great to have you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Hope you've been well, bud. Paul Montreal. Yep. Monday night indeed. Yeah. Don't, don't buy the one. <laughs> don't buy it. We'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a few minutes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Good to know. Top D. What's up, man? It's Ohio. Some Midwest people in the house. How's it going, Dustin? Hope you had a nice weekend. Went through that two weeks ago sometime. It's a bust. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I got two Glenn Farklesses here. 
And the reason is, is to be honest, they're, I'm a little bit overdue and sipping a bit on these. Well, here's what we have here. Glenfark was 15, which unfortunately, very unfortunately, is something you can only get in the UK or overseas for that matter. It is not part of the US lineup of Glenn Farkless. And that's a real bummer. Um, this one is 46% ABV. Outside of the 105, none of the other Glenn Farklesses of the core range available in the US are 46%. They're all 43 or 40. So we're gonna drink a little bit on that one. What I also have here is a Glenn Farkless 21 cast strength this was a whiskey exchange exclusive bottling. Um, we'll talk a little bit about this as well. And the reason being is, to be completely frank, uh, it's not that good. And that's really unfortunate because I was looking forward to, uh, to enjoying this because... Uh, I mean, come on, it's a cast strength 21 year old Glen like whiskey. Come on, right? It can't be bad. So I'm gonna taste these two head to head and just kind of see what's happened. I'll tell you my first impressions of this Glen Farkless was that it was pretty whack. It's just boring. It doesn't have any it doesn't have any complexity. It's not rich like you would expect. My hypothesis is that this 15 is gonna be better. We're gonna find out. So here's the deal with Glenn Farkless. There's a lot to like about them on paper. They're like family owned. They do this direct firing of their stills, which is like old school. Like nobody does that anymore. And it does, I guess, impart a bit more of a, I don't know, flavor of some sort. Maybe it's a little bit more caramelized. Maybe you get a little bit more heavy, I don't know, kind of a minerality to their whiskey. I'm not entirely sure. Somebody who knows more about scotch than I could probably say why the direct fire stills is something that's preferred. I believe the only other major distillery that still does that is Glenfiddich. Um, they use Dunnage warehouses, right? You got the earthen floors, a la Springbank, a la, um, you know, Glen Scotia, maybe, uh, Ben Romick. Not a lot of those exist anymore. And yeah, they're family owned, right? I mean, so it's like you want to support this distillery. Um, but I will tell you this, that and a lot of folks run into this when um, you're first getting into single malts. Sooner or later, you're, you've decided you're going to spend over $100 on a single malt here in the US. And lo and behold, your favorite shop has a 25 year old Glenn Farkless and it's only $140. And it's like, oh, my God, what? I have to get this, right? It's a 25-year-old sherry whiskey. Yeah, it's only 43%, but come on. I mean, that's a great deal. I was one of those people, and I'm sure some of you were as well. They also have a 21, there's a 17, and then there's like a 12 and a 10. Like That's really kind of the U.S. Map, like the U.S. bottlings of Glenn Farkless that you can find. Um and you buy this 25 and you're fucking excited because you just got a, the oldest whiskey you've probably ever had. You're confident this is going to be good. It's got an age statement, right? Come on. And then you pour it in the glass and you're like, eh, it's not all that interesting, but I'm sure it'll get better. And then it doesn't. And that's when the light goes on and you realize, oh, this is $140, $150 for a reason. Uh, sometimes I can drop to like $170 now. And the reality of the situation is, is for reasons I can't entirely explain uh, or know, I believe it's much speculated. It's due to the fact that they're using really just old, crappy, retired, or um, worn out casks, right? Um, what you would expect from a 25-year-old whiskey is just not present in the Glenn Farkless 25. And so, I mean, I don't think it's worth the money, to be honest with you. I think you can get much better sherried whiskeys, even way younger ones uh, that are just going to be better. And that's just the way it goes. And it's like, uh, for me, it, it, it was quite a like, 
you know, it was a little bit shocking because I was like, wow, why does 20, why does old whiskey not taste very good? Like, why is it not all that interesting? Because all I'd had is a Glen Farkless 25. Luckily, thanks to the internet and, you know, the whiskey community, I, I learned and I like, I kind of got the sense that this was a little bit of an anomaly and there's a reason it's $150 and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the story. I'm not going to tell you not to buy it or that you should, you know, that it's better than you think. I believe I scored it like a three, two, five way back in the day. I think in hindsight, I would probably drop that. It's not that it's a bad whiskey. It's just not, first of all, it's not worth 150 bucks because what you expect to get for that is just not present in the bottle. It isn't bad. It's just not that interesting. So I don't recommend it. And, you know, for those, maybe there's folks who disagree, but I, I just personally think like, there's a lot better whiskeys you can spend $150 on or $160 or $140 or whatever. I wouldn't even pay $120 for it, to be honest. I'd take a Glen Glendronic 15 all day over, over the a 25 Glen Farkless, for example. Anyways, so that's the deal. And so it's a distillery that I honestly don't pay much attention to because really the, the great Glen Farkless bottlings are part of what's called this family cask series. And they're all crazy expensive. They're 30 year olds, they're 40 year olds. Those are all just like astronomically priced. So it's a distillery that I don't pay much attention to um, until recently where I decided to kind of throw my hat back in the ring and try a couple other ones. And so what I do have here tonight is a, this is from the UK. This is a Glen Farkless 15, which is an inch. This is interesting. Number one, it's not available in the US market. Number two, Normally you see whiskeys in the UK bottled, some of them are bottled at less ABV, right? So like you have a Glenmore uh, Glen G10 is 40% in the UK, 43 in the US. Highland Park 12, same thing. Uh, Lafroy 10, same thing. Uh, this one is 46%, and yet none of the bottlings, <laughs> core range bottlings here in the US at Glen Park listed 46%, other than like the 105, right? But that's a cast strength. So like, you know, Here we go, right? Um, this one, let's get in the glass. I don't have any US releases to compare it to uh, for the reasons I kind of just stated is like, I just I just won't buy any because there's no reason. Um, I'm looking for something with a little bit, little bit richer and a little bit more exciting. And this 15, so these are around, this This is what, let me tell you a little something here. This is, this is what I would call a great add-on whiskey to your online international purchase. This is gonna run you about $60, which is a pretty solid price. And the reason I call it an add-on is like, normally if you're gonna go hunting for whiskey bottles on internationally, you're gonna pay up, pay up the ass in shipping. And what you wanna do is you wanna get that rare bottle you can't find in the US, which maybe is gonna cost you 150 bucks or 200 bucks. That's what you're looking to spend. Or you wanna get a couple smaller, you know, uh, less expensive things, but you're like, man, the shipping cost is killing me. It's almost the same price as if I paid regular. This is one of those great bottles you just add on, you pay another 50 bucks, it drops that economics of scale shipping down. So maybe you had three bottles and it was, uh, you know, $65 shipping. You throw this on, now you're getting four bottles and maybe it's like 72, right? So the shipping cost is going down as you're adding things. So this is a great add-on bottle. And in fact, that's why I picked it up. Um, it is 46% ABV, all Oloroso Sherry. Um, let me see. It does not say anything about chill filter or natural color on the bottle. It's the classic Glen Farkless tube. Dunnage Warehouse, blah, blah. Tumbling waters of the green burn, et cetera, et cetera, nothing. Maybe chill filtered, maybe natural color. I don't know if they're chill filtering at 46, but it'd be nice to know that they weren't. That's the color. So let's have a sip. And for those of you who've had the Glen Farkless 15, would love to hear what you think about it. I mean, I'll tell you right now, from what I remember of the 25 and the 12, which I had, I also had the 10. I mean, this is just richer. This 3% ABV difference, it's just richer. And maybe they're using better casks. I'm not sure. It's just, it's sweeter, it's brighter, it's richer. It smells like it's not a throwaway whiskey. 
If I was going to compare it to anything, I mean, this is nose wise, it's in that Glendronic 12 range, maybe not quite as sweet. I mean, this doesn't have PX after all. Sweet toffee. There's some malat, there's like a um, dried honey. And then you get the nice bright red fruits and maybe even a little bit of grape. It's pleasant. Let's give it a taste. Happy Monday, everybody. Medium body, sweet, slightly bitter, slightly spicy. You get a nice oak spice in this, but the sweetness balances right. This is why this whiskey, I think, beats these other ones in the U.S. range. It's just got, it's got a more depth to it. It just has more depth to it. It tastes like a properly aged whiskey. You get some of that oak spice. You get the creamy kind of like caramel vanillas. You get some of that nice dried red fruit. And that, that's the key thing too, is that these the notes in here are more of a dried red fruit, which is signifying, of course, that oxidization has, you know, that this has been aged for quite for a while. I'll tell you, I remember now having a Glenfarclas 25. I think I had one drink of one with somebody must have been over a year ago. And I remember not thinking, feeling like I got much of anything in terms of like dried, dried fruit notes in it at all. It was just kind of bland. This, is it the most complex whiskey in the world? No. Is it like going to knock your socks off? No. Very competent, great everyday sipper. It's got the right ABV. It's got a medium long finish. I'm getting a nice kind of cherry cherry dark chocolate malted milk ball thing going on 60 bucks sign me up it's a it's a solid whiskey and much better than the us 12 it's better than the 25 i think it's just more dynamic it's got life to it it doesn't taste like a tired old you know just just thrown into the bottle because they needed to sell it and that is that is the best way I can describe that. Uh, I can describe that 25. And there's a really, like, you go deeper in this, though. I mean, the, the fruit notes, there's almost like a tropical fruit in this. Pineapple, almost. It's strange. Anyways. I like this. This is a solid 3.5. It's an above average whiskey. It, it's it's good for a 15. It is not a Glendronic 15 revival. But I'll tell you, for a share for a nice shared whiskey, and it's you know 30 bucks less than a than a bottle of Glen uh, Glendronic. I mean, it's not going to beat it, but it's it's good. It's lighter, but it's good. Now I got no problem with this at all. This is probably right in that three five range for me. Worth a pickup, and again. It's a great just add-on if you're trying to stay within a budget, but order something special internationally, and you want to, you know, get your shipping down, but try to get something else that you'd like. This is a great whiskey just to throw on that, you know. Um, you won't be disappointed in it. We got 14 folks in, which is awesome. Um, I realize I've been talking a little bit. Let me uh, let me catch up on the chat here. Good weekend. Oh, wow. Really? Wow, man. Yeah, I'd say that's a good weekend. Very cool. Looking forward to another jam on my brother's 15. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Ditto, see ya. <sighs> yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad somebody did it because I had the choice of the 25 or the 21, and they were not that much different in price. I mean, what I think that one was 220. This was like 190 or something. Ah, uh, the twenty one's no better. No, it is not. I don't know why. I mean, this is this is a. I, I, I'm not sure why. I think it's because they're just, frankly, like they're just putting their seven. There's a seventeen, not a not a fifteen. Maybe there's just a marketing thing there. Um, and they just think that it's yeah, you know. But that 17 is only 43%, or maybe it's even 40. I'm not sure. I'd have to look. Um, 
but I think this Glenn Farquhar's 15 is better than the only ones I've not had full disclosure on the U S market. I have not had the 21 and I have not had the 17, but I've had the rest and I've not heard anything about those to make me think they're worth going and picking up. I think the 17 is around like 90 to hundred bucks. The 21's like, you know, 120, something like that. I'm, I'm not interested. And that's what happens. You have a bad experience with the distillery. It turns you off from it for a while. You know? Paris, France, Greg's in the house. How you doing, buddy? Great to see you, man. Now uh, we talked about this topic another day with Justin and Ken. Not a surprise for me. This is my, oh, you're Glenn Farkless. Okay. The close of supply and demand. Well, nowadays core range is somewhat decent, 12, 15, only if you don't look for shitty ones. You're talking about Glenn Farkless? Interesting. Wait, till he has a 22 year old 107 and it still isn't any good. 22 year old 107. I'm not so sure what that is. Oh, 105. Yeah, yeah. The 20, really, the age stated 105 isn't that good? Oh, God. I have saw that. I mean, I see the NAS one all the time. I didn't, I, I've heard and seen this 20, there's like a heavily aged 105. Again, one of, kind of what I was going for with this one, man, was like, man, maybe that's the way to go. Best affordable age good Farkless outside the family cast for me are some undisclosed ones, but you have to know where to look. Yeah, so let me let me actually just show you one other thing. I have one other Glenn Farkless. This is also another one that you have to get internationally. This one I, I don't know what to expect. I haven't opened it yet. So this is uh it's called the Glenn Farkless 45. No, it is not a 45-year-old. Uh it's a 45%. Um, it's one of only it's about 7,600 bottles. It's called, it's the 45% private reserve aged in the finest oak. I'm not sure what to expect with this, but it's all written in what looks like French on the back. Um, this is another one that I grabbed online. This one was even cheaper than the 15. Interesting bottling looks fancier than it probably is. It's some type of limited edition. This one does say natural color on it, which is interesting. Um, bottled in 2019. Yeah. And it doesn't say, I mean, it's, yeah, it's pro. I mean, I'm sure it's sherry, but I, I don't know. Yeah. So this is a, this is kind of a weird one. I, again, I grabbed it as, as a little bit of an add on just to kind of get my scale down my, uh, shipping cost on something. And I've just not got around to opening it, but check it out one of these days. Anyways, what else we got going? Hey, Nathan, how are you, man? Had the 12 and the 15 and the 105. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I hear you on that, man. Cheers, buddy. The 12 and it's okay. One and 105 were much the 25 and 105 were much better. I take the Glen Cadden Reserva and Lucia over the younger Glen Farkas for the same price. Oh, I haven't had that one yet. I've heard good things though. A IC86, man. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, oh, we got 17 folks in. It's great. Great to see everybody. Thank you guys for stopping in. I'm way, I just jumped way ahead. So, Coates, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Always good to have Jason in the house. Hope you're having a good summer, Bob. Uh, let me see here. James Morgan. NAS, though, but it has a good mouthfeel on that Glenn Cadham. Good to know. Lost Cause. What's up, buddy? Glenn Fire Gargos Bottles. Some tired cask that should be retired. Yeah, yeah. That's what we were just kind of alluding to is, uh, yeah, that's that seems to be the case here. 17 is the Glenn Farkless to buy, in my opinion, if you're going to do core range US stuff, but I wouldn't say run out and get it. Okay. And that's interesting. Do you remember, if, is that one 40, 43? Appreciate that, IC86. Thanks, buddy. Great to have you. Thanks for stopping in. James Morgan, got glasses in hand. Yeah, cheaper rendition, new label packaging. If the spirity is the ones I had 20 years to stay away from it. <laughs> oh, you're talking about that 45? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I, I felt like the price didn't match the marketing. So, uh, you know, just have to drink down this Glenn Farkless collection to, to never open again. <laughs> Probably be sticking away from these. Okay. Ah, oh, right on, man. Good shit, Jason. 
Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. We'll keep you as entertained as we can while you're uh, getting after it. All right. So I'm going to continue talking Glenn Fargo's here. Again, recommend this 15. This is the one to drink. Now, given everything I've said about Glenn Farkless, I came across some stuff on the Whiskey Exchange website a while back. And they had a 21 and a 25-year-old, which came in a packaging like this. Looks kind of fancy. Now, definitely not the regular one, right? And it's not the one that we see on the shelves. And it turns out these are some exclusive bottlings for Whiskey Exchange. So I'm thinking to myself, well, that sounds like a good deal. Um, blah, 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 180 years, et cetera, et cetera. We do things the old world way, all that shit. Pretty cool kind of uh, art deco labeling. And then I see that it is 54.2%. So I'm thinking to myself, oh man, this is going to be the Farkless to get. I finally found a Glenn Farkless. It's a cast strength. It's, this was like a, just, it was under 200 bucks. I think it was like 170. I don't recall exactly. It's a 21 year old at cast strength, Oloroso Sherry. Come on. This has got to be the one that delivers, right? Well, we're going to, we're going to visit it, but I will tell you right now, I actually found this to be again, as about as boring as that 25, it, better than the 25. I shouldn't lie. It was better than the regular 25, but it is not as good as, and or as interesting as this 15. So we're going to see if that holds true here. I am going to get a fresh glass. I'm going to pour some in here and just let this thing sit. I'm really hoping this turns around. I this this was it for me. I think this was this was it on my Glenn Farkless uh, journey. If there was going to be, or if there is going to be another one, it's going to be a family cast, which I can't afford. But maybe I'll get lucky one day. But you know, I'm thinking to myself, Christ, a 21 year old at cast ring like this. There's just this can't go wrong. If if this isn't good, this is just like it. Just either I don't, I'm missing something about their distillery, or they're just not all that good. I'm going to let that sit there for a second. Um, yeah, we got 15 folks in, which is awesome. Um, let me just tell everybody a little bit about what's going on here. So if you, you didn't catch the beginning, I did a quick housekeeping update. So uh, yes, this is the second Monday I've done, and it's the second Tuesday that I'll miss. Everything is gravy. Uh, I'll be back on Tuesday starting next week for the regular t Tasty Tuesday happy hour. Uh, the reason I had to move this to Monday is... My, uh, I am from Milwaukee, for those who don't know, and if you know anything about the sport world in the United States, the Milwaukee Bucks are now one game away from winning the NBA Finals for the first time in over 45 years uh, since the 1970s before I was born. So, um, Milwaukee is just about an hour and a half north of where I am in Chicago, and so I need to go be up there with my people for what is hoping to be one hell of a celebration for my hometown. So needed the two reschedule things so I can go be part of this uh, hopefully historic night uh, for my home city. So I will be gone tomorrow night, um, but Telex will be holding down the fort. And so y'all can, uh, you know, keep an eye on his channel. He will be doing his regular, you know, he'll be doing a show on Tuesday, keeping the whiskey chat going. And uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, I apologize for the again for the uh, schedule change again this week, but you know, I got to do it. <laughs> That's just all there is to it. I'm not, uh, I'm not missing it. Um, I'll try and put some photos on Instagram up if they win. And if you don't know anything about Milwaukee, it's uh, they're the little engine that could smallest. Smallest market in baseball, smallest media market in the NBA, I believe, or maybe second smallest. Uh, this is going to be really special if they win. Really special. So hopefully I'll be having a couple cups of cheer tomorrow night. All right. Mahir's in the house from Delhi, India. What's going on, brother? Great to see you, man. Um, and congrats on you and your boy Kapil picking up those 
Glenn uh, Lafroy 18 green tubes. I saw that on on uh, on uh, Instagram, man. That is rad. Yeah, for sure, Greg. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be really cool. Cheers. Hell yeah, Jason. Go Bucks. I can't believe they won game five this weekend. I was I was at a bar here in Chicago. Uh, it's, a, it's a Wisconsin bar. Uh, so there are a lot of Wisconsin folks there. Um, and uh, we got to enjoy the Bucks pulling off an improbable win in Phoenix, which was just amazing. It was an amazing game. A uh, lot of stress, which is, you know, what you expect in the NBA Finals, but um, really an NBA playoff game. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, yeah. The minute they won, I'm like, oh boy, I gotta go to Milwaukee. <laughs> I gotta go be there. <laughs> I gotta be there for this. So it'll be fun. Not to be pedantic. Uh, pedantic. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Since really, Cincinnati is smaller media market than Milwaukee. Wow. Well, there you go. Uh, I mean, but it gives you a sense of kind of like I mean, Milwaukee is a small, small city, and. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I'm sure the Bucks are. I mean, you know, they got Memphis and a couple other teams, and maybe their Bucks are kind of right around there. But Wisconsin pro sports teams are in the bottom of the uh, market size, pretty much everywhere. So um, interesting, though. Good point, KC. That makes sense too, Jason. Yeah, 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 dude. Giannis, Giannis. I don't know if any of y'all watched that game, but if you know, not to go down on a, a rant and digress too much, but. If you just go look at the steal, like at the last like 15 seconds of the game where uh, Drew Holiday gets this great steal from Phoenix and alley oops to Giannis, it was just, man, I lost my mind. This is why, in fact, is why my voice is kind of a bit hoarse because I was yelling and hooting and hollering so much because you know how it goes. Come to watch games, but I'm rooting for the city. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah. Go brew or go box. Awesome, man. Great to hear. I'm assuming you're talking about the COVID stuff going on over in India, man. That's great to hear, Mahir. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know, you'd like to see a team like Phoenix win too, right? I mean, Phoenix is a storied history and like, man, they're so young and they're such a good team. It's just great to see. I mean, okay, Giannis is a, clearly a star, but he's not like you know, LeBron James or you know, Tim Duncan was or Kevin Durant or you know, uh, Steph Curry. It's, it's just great to see some like, you know, lesser known teams with lesser known uh, players getting the center stage here. I would totally be cheering for Phoenix in most other scenarios uh, if they were playing against East uh, Eastern Conference. But yeah, uh, it's you look a, a year without the Lakers is a good year, or a, a year without LeBron. Maybe you know, move over a little bit. Royals pulled one off recently than the Chiefs. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I know it. I mean, I'm also a diehard Packers fan, so, you know, I hear you on that. Really sorry, but I've got to go for now. I'll see you all soon. Hey, man, get your important work done, buddy. Thanks for stopping in. Always good to see you, my here. Is Atlanta resident and fan? I enjoyed the Hawks run, but Milwaukee has the better team. Yeah, yeah I was surprised, actually, by that. I mean, I was surprised we got past the Nets, but, you know, we did. <laughs> so let's do it. I mean, and plus, yeah, Giannis is just, Giannis probably top three NBA player and, like, took a, signed a long-term deal. We'll see how long it actually lasts for, but stayed in Milwaukee. I mean, it's just awesome. I mean, it, it reminded me of when Ryan Braun uh, signed the long-term deal with the Brewers in like the early mid two thousands and, uh, took like way less money. Yes. I know. I know about Braun. It was a heartbreaking thing. I know he was a fucking asshole cheater, but, uh, you know, for a city like Milwaukee, which hasn't had a, it doesn't get stars and, you know, the NBA is much like in the MLB, it's just like the, the good players, you know, they start somewhere and then they head on off to, uh, to, uh, other, um, other teams to go, you know, pile on and win. It was a big deal at the time. 
Yeah, not an obscure nobody, but I mean, he's not like a global. I mean, maybe before, not before tonight, or not before this final. I wouldn't say he's like a global star like Steph Curry or like like uh, 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 what you want to call it. Um, you know, like LeBron James or something like that. But yeah, duly noted. Yeah, man, it was brutal. It was brutal. Braun, like the Braun, when Braun signed with the Brewers as long as he did, it was like, I couldn't believe it because every time it's just the Brewers are just a farm team for the Yankees or the Dodgers or the Red Sox or, you know, the Phillies or whatever. And it was such a huge deal. I mean, to like have somebody stay and, and be as good as he was. And then he turns out to be, you know, obviously throwing, throwing the working man FedEx driver under the bus about cheating. It was just like, oh. <laughs> why <laughs> the one guy that stays and why <laughs> you know i mean he's he was the best best player in a brewer's uniform since robin yount and paul molitor and they were just doing coke so you know <laughs> all right enough sport ball for now let's get into this glenn farkless 21 again as i was saying this is a special release it is not the like 21 year old you get in uh in the states uh it is a cast strength Oloroso Sherry, 54.2%, et cetera, et cetera. That is the tail of the tape. Here's the color. Rather light, I would say, for a 21-year-old, but <sighs> baking spice. Dark sherry notes. Sweet spice. That's basically what you're you're getting here. You know, it's got a little bit more depth to it than the 15 on the nose. Not a ton more. It still has this signature kind of Glenn Farkless. There's a slight minerality, and there's this... It's just a very, like, bright sweetness that you get on the red fruit. Some cinnamon, maybe a little bit of, like, allspice-type stuff when you go deeper. A little prickly, but it's gas strength. Coats. Braun was with 30% of the league that were asshole cheaters, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, you know it, bro. I mean, you know it. Being a Royals fan, it's like you don't get guys that stick around very long. You know, they get they go off to another team after a while. I mean, we, you know, you had you had that great run with uh, Lorenzo Cain and all them. It was awesome, man. I was cheering for the Royals that year. There is a nice toffee note in this. Perfumey. All right, here we go. 21 year old Glenn Farkless Castro. Wow. Okay. Much richer, stickier, oilier on the mouthfeel than the 15 for sure. Um, little hot, but whatever. Nice, dark, Oloroso red fruits, cherry, um, like black cherry, maybe some um, nutmeg, or I'm sorry, nutmeg, Jesus. Um, like plum, almost prune. Then you get some nice kind of, again, spice, there's a cinnamon note. There's a little bit of honey. There's some kind of uh, like allspice, even maybe like a Chinese five spice to some degree. Finish, medium, it extends kind of long. It's like uh, like maraschino cherry. Here's the thing. I'm going to put a little water on it, but... It's just like, okay, a sherry bomb is a sherry bomb is a sherry bomb, right? I mean, some would argue you don't get a ton of complexity at the end of the day off of a big sherry bomb. That said, I think this one is pretty basic even for that paradigm. I mean, it's okay. It's 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 a not a bad whiskey, but like there's nothing in here that is really exciting. I mean, in Allardyce or 
in Aberla or Abuna, I think blows this out of the water. And it, it just, it's just lacking. It's like timid. It's like timid. It's like holding back. It's really a bummer, man. I don't know. It arrives promising and it even develops pretty nice, but then it drops off in a way that. Okay. Is this better than that 15? Yes. Is it, so this is a what, around a 200 or 180 to $200? I would buy an Allardyce over this. I would buy an Abuna cast strength over this. I would buy an Edgerdauer 10 uh, unchill filtered, you know, signatory release over this. All are much cheaper. This is good. It should be better, though, especially for the cast strength. It just should be better. It, it's surprisingly kind of edgy. I mean, in, you know, it's let's do a little water. I want to be as fair as I can to this. I, I just don't feel like it really, it doesn't deliver enough. Now, is this, how does this compare to that old Glenn Farkless 25? Yeah, I don't have a bottle here with me, but I can tell you right now it's much better. If you were going to pick up, if you wanted to get an expensive old Glenn Farkless, buy this. Still prickly. It doesn't say anything about chill filtration or natural color on this, as far as I can see. No? There's some milk chocolate in this, too. And, like, orange. There's, like, an, like I was saying, a citric. There's, like, a little citrus in this. It's, like, an orange. It's strange. I mean, it has it has a distinct character. I'll give it that. It it it's not uh, homogenous with like any old just bland sherry. Like it it is a it is it does have some distillery character. I will give it that. There's a minerality. There's a little bit of almost like a copper tin note. Maybe this is from that direct fire still ship that they talk about. It's not enough to like make this a world beating whiskey though. Mm. Okay. What can I say? It's hotter than I expect. It's spicier than I expect. It has character. It's around, what, $200. It underwhelms for a 21-year-old. It underwhelms for a 21-year-old at cast strength. It's a decent whiskey. Yes, that is the sound of Winston's great. He's being a little pest right now. I don't know what he's up to. Three. Three, two, five. I don't know. It's not exciting. I can't fake it. So, yeah, I'd say three, five on the 15. Three, two, five on this 21-year-old cast strength uh, whiskey exchange exclusive. Again, they're a little above average. I mean, they're not bad whiskeys. Um, three, uh... You know, three is maybe what I would say is average. Um, this Farkless, though, this 21 is it's borderline between a three and a three, two, five. This is what it is. That said, I'm going to have a little bit more because I need to drink something else. They do get they do get some love for that label though. That is rad. Art Deco kind of like I dig it. They should be more inventive. I mean, they're going for this whole like, you know, it's all about the whiskey look, you know? It's like very simple. It's like still though, come on, man. You have to actually make a better whiskey. 
Oh, look, they have tasting notes on the back. How did I do? Cherry, yes. Black currant, yes. Well, I didn't say that, actually. Orange. Earthy dunnage warehouse notes build. I'm not so sure about that. Soft and rounded on the palate with brown sugar dusted spiced bread. Packed with nutmeg, yes. Clove, yes. Cinnamon, yes. All followed by black currant, gingerbread, and mint, cho mint chocolate. Sweet and fruity into the finish with fruit cake, caramel, and cinder toffee fading slowly. Okay, so I wasn't totally off on what their notes are, but boy, they, they sure make it sound exciting, don't they? All right. Unless you're drinking family cask. If you're newer to scotch and you're on here and you're kind of like, you see these Glen Farquhar's at decent prices. If you're gonna get one, grab the twelve just to get your bearings on a on what a, sh a sherried Scotch tastes like. Uh, you know, but I, I wouldn't recommend spending a lot of money on some of these other Glen Farquhar's that look like they're cheap for the age because they're just they're just not gonna deliver. Let me catch up on the chat. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you on that. Hi, Winston. No. Yep. Seasoned cask, he said. Oh, you're suggesting that maybe these uh, these are seasoned sherry. That that would be interesting. Could you say a little more about that? I think I know what you mean. It's just that it's not actually like they didn't actually contain sherry, so it's not that deep in the wood. So it's not there's not much flavor to impart, but. Do you want to taste that Bobler 21 Gordon McPhail that Alan got you to open for a seven hour stream? It might need to sit 30 minutes. That's not a bad idea. I should bring that back out. Yes, he was. Yeah. He's, he's been chasing some fly around that got in here. It seems like that they are questioned quite frequently with Glenn, Glenn Farkless, as they should be. Top shelf does it. Ask him Glenn Farkless for disclosure. Disclosure. I don't even know. <laughs> hey, Timothy Juarez. What's up, buddy? Thanks for stopping in, man. Good to see you. Happy Monday. Saying hi to Tim. Mike Myers in the house. What up, man? Good to see you, bud. Always good to have you in the house. The Dunnage Warehouse notes, I'm sure, build up to the <laughs> Yeah, it ain't, it ain't like a spring bank. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll give him that. Jason Coates is right. I, I have heard way more ridiculous. I mean, you know, read any Highland Park or an Ardbeg for that matter. Uh, you know, I appreciate Glenn Farkless keeping it, keeping it out of the creative writing and into just kind of a little bit more <laughs> direct. <laughs> but uh, I don't get a lot of an earthiness to this. Maybe a little bit, but. Yeah, that's for sure. Paul saying hi to folks. Now I realize I have a sample of the 105 Glen Farkless has been Demon Hunter, I, but I poured a sample of Glen Allocky 12. What is the ABV on Glen Allocky 12, 46? Yes, yeah, that's 46. Oh, Blair is quite the party I've heard. It is, uh, it was. Hey, speak of the devil, there is Alan right now. What's up, man? <laughs> We were just talking uh, some Glenn Farkless. Alan and I, uh, I had the pleasure of joining him for his 4,000 subscriber uh, what a marathon show. We were on for a couple of hours, weren't we, bud? <laughs> I've been, uh, to, somebody mentioned that I should go back to that bar, that Ball Blair 21. I think I might pour some of that tonight. Why not? Amir Burzi. What's up, buddy? Nice dog. I was watching your Glen Alki Batch 5 upload last night. Awesome review. Hey, thank you so much. Oh, good to know. That's awesome. Thank you, man. That's a great bottle. Yeah, that, that was a really good one. I've been, I've been enjoying that since then. Cheers, Amir. Thanks for stopping in, man. And for that tip, that's a good tip. Exactly. Modern practices are more seasoning a few weeks only instead of a few decades using better quality ones, but also... Herrick said, 
which seems to be a bit PX profile wise compared to now. This is Greg Whiskey Guy talking about uh, the seasoned casks that may be the culprit here in these underwhelming Glen Farkless's. That's probably true. That's interesting to know. Thank you, man. <laughs> Mr. 4K7 hour live stream, Alan. Yeah. That was fun, bro. I don't think I've been on a live stream for that long in quite some time. Uh, what else is going on? You won't go wrong with the ball blare. Yeah. I might have to grab one. I might, or grab it for that matter. Winston, what do you think? You want to go up and say hi? You're acting like a fool over here. Bear, come say hi. Oh. <laughs> Winston the Whiskey Cat making his live appearance again. He's been uh, lingering, so I think he needs a drink. You need a drink, buddy? Maybe. All right. Here, go back up in your little spot. He had a bit of a cold, which he's just gotten over, so he's been uh, he's been a little bit more on the jumping around side. Jason Co says, I expect it has more to do with third fill than season. So many cast seasons these days and don't end up like this. Interesting. Seems possible, right? So, ref yeah, refill... In the terminology, it's like if they say it's, it's X sherry that's a seasoned or that's a second fill and then if they say it's um refill that's a third i believe it's usually what they the the nomenclatura is about it what's up man let's see what he's got to see here if you really need attention all right here we go we're gonna do this really quick what do you think of this glenn farkless <laughs> no no dice <laughs> <laughs> the verdict is no. Winston the Winston, the whiskey cat has spoken. Oh, don't be all dejected. All right. Anyways, I am going to get that ball blair out now that Alan's here. And it's just a great comparison because this ball blair here, this is a 21-year-old. Uh it's a Glenn, Glenn, uh, Gordon McPhail collection. It's only 43%. I don't believe it's all sherry. I'm actually not sure. But I'll tell you, this this kicked that. This kicks these asses. I'm going to put this in the glass. Oh, yeah, that's bourbon. I'm going to put this in the glass, let it sit for a while, which means I am going to hang out for a little bit. So uh, give that a good 20 minutes rest. <sighs> Sad what's happened to Ball Blair. They they went the like generic, just 18 year old, 15 year old route instead of all those old vintages. And I think that's kind of taken a bit away from them. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks. I see. Yeah, he's a trip. Oh, interesting. Nope. He doesn't like it at all, Jason. So it doesn't say. So they're actually quite clever about that on here. So here's what it says. I've actually never really, I'm not sure I've ever seen this before. Oh, wait a minute. No, never mind. I take that back. It's just in two separate places. It says Oloroso Sherry Cask Matured. So it's full maturation, I'm assuming. I thought it just said Oloroso Sherry on it. So my mistake. Yeah, so uh, I guess... I guess this is matured. I don't know if they have to legally dispose if it's seasoned or not. So matured probably means that they're using like a third, like an X refill cask or something like that. Let's see on this. Uh, see on the on the fifteen, it doesn't even say. It doesn't say anything. It says natural color. Okay, so it is natural color. Glen Farkless is our natural color. It says it's more complex than its younger whiskeys. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> Uh, let's see. No, uh, it looks like the thing that they say on the back is just generic, as they say on everything. Okay, so both of these are natural color. 
I would rather have, I mean, I don't know. Are they not, are they chill filtering 46% and castering? I mean, I'm assuming the castering's not, but they should just say it. It's like, it's not that many extra characters to add to your fucking label. Just say non-chill filtered on it. Don't leave us in suspense. Lord knows they could be chill filtering this shit, you know? Just say it. All right. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I would rather have fake colorant and no chill filtration than the other way around. This 21 isn't that bad, man. I, I just feel like it doesn't win. It just doesn't win. For what it should be, man. This is just not winning. This is just, this is lazy. It's just lazy. I don't know. If this was, if this, if this, if the way this tastes was anything like even close, I mean, this is just so much better than the 25 or the 21 or the seven, or I don't know about the 17, but the ones that are released in the US at 43. It's just so much better, but it's still not amazing. I really had to try a family cast one time in my life because I really, I just got to know. I got to know how, how, like how, like what, what is it, what does a great Glen Farquhar's taste like? Because I think there are a lot of distilleries that have not, not just good whiskeys, have great whiskeys in their core range. And Glen Farquhar's, I don't think does. <laughs> they just don't. I'm gonna have a little more of this 15. I mean, I you know, Glendronic. Yes, I know they're going down the shitter as we speak, but let's just, you know, for those of us who've had some good Glendronic core range, there are two great whiskeys in their core range, maybe three: Revival, Allardyce, Parliament. Those are those are great whiskeys. You know, Ardbeg has arguably two. Corey Vrecken and Ugadal. Uh, Lafroig has probably one in its core range, 10 cast strength. Lore isn't great, but it's good. Obviously, like a 25, but that's it varies from release to release. I mean, Gun Farkless, I don't think, has one. It's a bummer. Winston. He's literally pawing at a door that's already open. <laughs> what are you doing, you crackhead? I think he's tired of listening to me talk about Glenn Farkless. All right, man. Just don't knock over my white horse, you fucker. So yeah, I'm just thinking about my I'm thinking about this now. Like whiskeys that like distilleries that have just great releases in their core range. I think I got, I think I grabbed some good ones there, but like there definitely are some good Farkless ain't one of them. I mean, there's probably more than, I mean, uh, Bunahaven, even, even the newer ones, 18 is great. I would argue their 12 is great for a 12. Be nice if Glenn Farkless could just either, I don't know, use a better cask, up it to 46, something. Because they're missing out, man. I feel like they have a great story. I feel like they could really appeal to uh, a subset of the whiskey community that, like, really appreciates this kind of, like, old school approach to things which they have in spades. They could really capitalize on this, but they just need to make a better damn whiskey. Thinking about a couple other just like core range releases from distilleries that are great. Glen Scotia 15. Kilcarran 12. And those are great for what they are. Those are great in their range, I think.
Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, that's the story in the Glenn Farkless. Let me just give everybody a quick reminder at the top of the hour. So if you missed the beginning of the show, um, yeah, I'm on a Monday again, and that's because the Bucks are in the finals, and I'm from Milwaukee, so I'm going up to Milwaukee tomorrow to watch them hopefully win the NBA finals and be part of the festivity of my people. So Telex will be on. Be sure to catch his channel. Show him some love, and then I'll be back for the regular Tasty Tuesday happy hour next week. Uh, the That'll be July 27th, and I think I'm going to do the new uh, uh, Toravag, which is the uh, this new distillery that just – released their first thing, uh, whiskey from the Isle of Skye. So they're up there with Talisker, only the second distillery on, on the Isle. So um, I did pick that up. I think I'll probably do that. I might do something else. I don't know. I just got this recently, and I think I might want to do this one sooner than later. This is an Archives Ben Nevis 21, 48.2%. Uh, so these are bottled at cast strength, uh, they say. It's a single cask. This I, I might, I maybe I'll do this one. Bourbon Hogsheads. I've never had any of these archives things. They're beautiful labels though, right? They have a bunch of them. There's like a couple different other distilleries they do. So I just picked that up. I might do that. I don't know. Ben Nevis is a distillery I'm not, I haven't had a lot of it, but the ones I had a, uh, if Tony, Tony um, is on, I did a little whiskey tasting over at his place and uh, he had one of those single cast nation Ben Nevis, Ben Nevis uh, releases, which was just awesome. Awesome stuff. Let me see what's going on in the chat here. We got 21 folks in. It's great, man. It's great to see everybody. Hope everyone had a nice weekend and you guys are uh, enjoying your summers. Paul M. Oh, talking about Alan's live stream. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Bourbon Bounty. Hey, man, how you been? Long time no see. Yeah. Work's been crazy. 65 plus hours a week. Hey, man, that's awesome to see you, dude. Uh, for those who are into bourbons, especially if you're, uh, you know, take a second, open up another window, give uh, Bourbon Bounty a subscription. He's great. We've done a couple lives together. We should probably do another one soon, man. I've picked up some. Uh, I've been picking up some bourbons of late. Definitely picking up some bourbons. Um, we've got a few that I think might, like like you as well. Some rise actually. I got some rise too. Uh, living in Chicago now, man. So here with the store picks, <laughs> uh, I, I you know I got Benny's store picks just everywhere and they got so many damn uh releases that i i feel like you know i can't help but be buying more bourbons and rice i just got like three bottles of sazerac rye the regular sazerac rye which are store pick bottling single barrels uh a couple others i got scotty pippen's new uh bourbon digits and i got two of them signed by him so we could probably uh i don't know if digits has made it down by you but I did get a bottle to open as well. Uh, yeah, some old elk picks. Bunch of shit, man. Jack Daniels Rise. You know, we'll have to do another one of those. Coat says he's had some crappy Boone at 12s. Oh, okay. Good to know. Core Range is something Campbelltown does. With. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I was going to recommend any Campbelltown, like, if there, if I was going to say there's gr what are great core releases out of Campbelltown whiskeys, definitely Glen Farkless or Glen Scotia 15, uh, Kilcarran 12. I mean, when you go to Springbank, probably the Springbank 10, probably the Springbank, maybe even the Springbank 15, although there's been a lot of variation. Those Springbank 12 cast strength. I'd say it hovers between good and great all the time. It's never not good. What are you doing up there? Come on. Get down. You up there being weird. James Morgan. Five liters of water on that stream. That was smart. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Dustin. Dustin. 
eight hours. Oh, God, yeah. You are alive and kicking. Yes, this is this is definitely good news. It's great to see you, man. Thanks for stopping in and saying hi, hanging out. Some folks chatting about something. Greg's got to go. It's late in Paris. Great to see you, Greg. Take care, man. Always good to have and uh, have you in the house. And if you haven't yet, go uh, go shoot him a subscription. He's got a great whiskey channel. Good to know. Favorite distillery at Jason Coates is bad. I'm assuming you're talking about the Ben Nevis, right? Picking up a bottle of Glen Getty 12 tomorrow. You will not be disappointed in that, Paul. That is a damn good bottle. That was in my top five whiskeys, I think, in, uh, oh, when was that? 2015? Or, I'm sorry, 2018? That is a good bottle. 48%. It's dessert like it's it's really good. It's really good. I recommend it. Um, that's another one that I would say hovers on a great core range release. Glen Getty 12. I'll be interested to hear what you think of that, Paul. Enjoy that. You know Chi Town well. Okay. Then you know. I'm up in Scotland latest week. Yeah, aren't you? Oh. And you're picking up a Glen Getty 12, too. Nice. You're going to Glen Going, too, right? I believe that you said something about that. Yeah, he says, correct. Ben Nevis says, 90s cast were pretty fantastic across the board. That's good to know. <sighs> Give me just a sec, y'all. Come on, man. You got to get down from here. You can't be up there. Oh, I know. I know. You don't like it. It's all good. Just sit tight. Keep it chill. You're fine. Getting into trouble. Um, Code says Glengaddy 12 is underrated. Yeah. That's a really good whiskey. Really rich. Uh, you're going to like that, Paul. I mean, especially if you like a, like a really heavy whiskey. That is, it's dessert-like for sure. You'll enjoy it. Um, I was a big fan. I, I've been I've been seeing some other bottlings of theirs. Like, again, overseas, like a 15 and a 17. I'm really tempted to pick up, but I, I, because I was just so impressed with that 12. That's a really good whiskey. Super malty said, yeah. Really good stuff. Um, let's see here. I'm probably going to have a little something to something else here. I was just, you know what? This is really funny. So I just took a sip of this Glen Farkless here, and I was like, wow, this has gotten really nice and rich and chocolatey and malty. Maybe I was, maybe I've been a little harsh on this 21, and then I realized it's a 15. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this Glen Farkless 15. I don't know why. The forty-six percent, or they're using better casks. I don't know, but it is good, good damn stuff. All right, so this has been a lot of sherry. How long we've we been on? Six hours already. <laughs> Demon Hunter, one of the unpeated ones I want to go to. Yo, Jason, exactly. That's what it was called, the Renaissance 17. And you don't think it was any better than the 12? Man, and there's a 15 as well. That's a bummer. I, I was, I've was i been really interested. I've just never quite done it. I That 12-year-old is almost perfect. I think if I did a, if I was going to put together a list of the best, you know, 12-year-olds that are, like, that you can get maybe, I don't know, under 100 or whatever, Man, I don't think I think Glen Gaddy 12 would be real high on that list. That'll be fun. What 12 year olds, if you had to put together a list of your top, I don't know, five or your top three 12 year old whiskeys, which way would you go? He's out. Take care, buddy. <laughs> I will, man. <laughs> Great to see you, Alan. Thanks for stopping in, bud. Yeah, the series is the Renaissance bottle. Yep, 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 yep. That's right. That's right. It was like called Renaissance Chapter Two or Renaissance Three or some shit, right? 
I mean, yeah, if I was going to put together, I don't know, a list of the top top 12-year-olds, I feel like you can't include the, the like, rare, like, the cast strengths. Like, maybe just the regular ones. Highland Park, 12. Glen Gaddy, 12. Definitely, probably, maybe Glen Allocky, 12 would be in there. Um, geez, I mean... I don't know, McCallan 12? Would McCallan 12 Sherry Oak be in there? That's a pretty good one. I don't know. I don't think Glenn Glendronic would be Buna, maybe. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> uh, let's see. 12 year olds. Well, old Paulney. I don't know about that. I'll tell you that all oh, that new old Pony 15 is weak. I was I I was pretty unimpressed. Thank you, yeah, Jason Coates. You're right. That's one. Kill Karen for sure. For sure. Boone at 12 for sure. <laughs> bourbon Bounty says I did a bourbon review earlier and needs to rehydrate with a Coors light. There you go. It's basically water. Yeah, Kill Karen 12 for sure. You're right. That has to be on there. I'd put it on there. Yeah, Kill Karen 12, Highland Park 12. Uh, probably, um, yeah, Boone at 12, um, Glenn Gaddy 12, mm, not Kalila, Kalila 12 is pretty weak. Uh, uh what's the other way to go here? I don't know. There's so many options. Maybe the Glen Allocky 12. They change a lot, but it's good. Yeah, I was saying not cast rank, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Edradar 12 Caledonia for sure. I mean, that would be on there if we didn't go cast rank. No doubt. No doubt. Those Edradors are so are so damn good. Deanston 12. That's a solid pick. Deanston. Would you take the Deanston over the Glen Allocky? Oh, Caledonia is only 46. Okay, well, then Caledonia's got to be in there. My bad. I was wrong about that. He says Glen Fark was 12 is a dangerous tram. Yeah, I mean, define danger. <laughs> uh, ben Demon Hunter at Glen Allocky 12. And I'm happy with it. Good. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, 100% on that. The, the decanter bottles for sure. I mean, or the like, um, so I have a couple. So I have one back here actually. I don't know if it's a 12. Yeah, it is a 12. This is a cast drink. This is a Madeira Edredauer, 61.3%. Oh my God. This is a Madeira cast drink. Uh, I have a couple Balakins too. I have a signet. No, oh, there's a signatory too. Hang on. What's this? This is a 12 year as well. This is a signatory um, Oloroso Edredur. Let's see. Is this all is this Oloroso? Yeah. 57.4. And I, yeah, I got some Balakins too. I feel like these are just always such winners, man. It's <laughs> and Edradour is, if I'm not mistaken, they're actually owned by uh, an independent bottler. Are they Gordon McPhail? Or are they because Kate? Okay, Caden Head. No, Gordon McPhail owns Ben Romick. Caden Heads is owned by Springbank. Edradour is fuck. Who's the distillery that, or who owns them? Somebody else will be able to remind me of that. I'm blanking right now. Because they're from an independent bottler, right? But it's not it's not Gordon McPhail. Signatory. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's right. Since the early 2000s. Okay. Buna 12 wins against Glen Alec. He says, says Ben Demon Hunter. 
dangerous jam, a group of friends, cork comes off, it never goes back in. <laughs> Righteous man. Let's see, it's vintage. Yeah. Ah, okay, got it. So Springbank owns Signatory. No, Springbank owns Caden Heads. Signatory owns Edradour. And then Gordon McPhail owns Ben Romick. Got it. Are there any other independent bottlers owned by distilleries or distilleries that own independent bottlers? Just to uh, close the loop on this. So there's we have three, right? We have Edradour, which is owned by Caden Heads. I'm sorry. Signatory. Springbank owns Caden Heads. And then Gordon McPhail owns Ben Romick. Bourbon Bauti at James Morgan. I just use my work for hobby. I'm a technical security guy for a very large insurance company that you have heard of. Well, yeah, you live in North Carolina, right? So it's got to be one of those. <laughs> Ard Merchant or Ardenburn. Yeah, okay. Adelphi. Man, what? Yeah, I remember all the great Adelphis. I, I sort of missed the boat on those, but every once in a while you can find one. All right, I'm gonna go get a little bit more water here. And we're gonna get into some 21 year old bobbler. From Gordon and McPhail, I wish I had more than one bottle of this. All right, party people. What did I miss? Oh, yeah, I'm done with these Glen Fargo's. Somebody's going to get some samples of these because <laughs> they're not going to be able to stay on my shelf for much longer. I'm tired of looking at them. I'm tired of the disappointment. No, I explain them, but I, I might put those in some samples. Oh, he's in good hands where he works. I'm a London-based bourbon fan. Don't get the full range off in the U.S., but I keep up. Mostly chess, craft, and bigger players. Bigger players, yeah. Yeah, James, we should talk sometime. I'd be happy to. I don't have a substantial bourbon collection. I've actually sold a lot of it, and I didn't have a ton of rare stuff to begin with. But, you know, I got some smoke wagon other stuff. Maybe I could get you some samples sometime. Paul M. Malt Muser Whiskey. 2019 was your review of Glen Gaddy 12. Okay. That makes sense. Man, I got to get another bottle of that. I think that was a four for me, if I'm not mistaken. That, that's, a, that's damn good whiskey. That 
<laughs> oh, Coates ain't running. He's not lying. Most, most of us don't get the full range of it either. <laughs> the U.S. is crazy, man. The, like the liquor, like the way liquor gets distributed in this country is crazy, man. Every state's different. Yeah, he's not lying about that. All right. Ball Blair 21. Now we're going to drink some whiskey. Actual, real good whiskey. This is only 43%, and I was real hesitant when I bought it, but I was like, what the fuck? It's a 21-year-old Ball Blair. At that time, this was like $130. Uh, and I had this sitting around for a couple years, man. Um, unfortunately... I don't know how easy it is to get your hands on these anymore. And it's really unfortunate what Ball Blair, what they've done to Ball Blair. Ball Blair used to be really unique. So you see these colored boxes behind me. Ball Blair used to have these really unique releases. They come in, they were vintage statements. So they're not actual years, they're vintage statements. And they come in these like colorful fluorescent boxes. They look really cool. Um, and they've switched over to just generic like 18 year old, 15 year old, 10 year or 12 year old, etc., and change their whole look. They look like any other whiskey now, which is a bummer. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, it's just kind of a bummer what's happened with them. They are part of, uh, they're owned by, I believe, the Edgerton Group, who also owns Old Paltney, and they recently went through a rebrand as well. The other distillery that they own is my precious Anak, and I'm very concerned that we may sooner or later find ourselves with uh, a change in Anak as well, because they seem to be more interested in, I don't know, whatever their marketing is, uh, which would be really unfortunate. Um, and one of the other reasons I, I definitely tell folks, so uh, my whiskey of the year last year, yes, it was a expensive one, but justifiably so, in my opinion, it is it was the um, Anak 24 years old. Uh, yeah, should get your damn hands on a bottle of it. It's, it's criminally underpriced and it's delicious. Um, I don't know how long it'll say that. You can sometimes find it under 200. It's worth it if you know, want a nice bottle that punches above its weight and has a great value. I am a whiskey, whiskey lover. I just know a shit ton about bourbon, but I enjoy the hell out of them all. Yes, he does. We should talk some swaps sometime too, Bounty. Inverhouse. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Not Edgerton. Uh, that was my, yeah, that's my mistake. It's Inverhouse. Yeah, Nakdu is what is the distillery that owns Anok. Um, not to be confused with Nakendo, but it's terrifying. But the Pete Hart over the weekend, excellent. Excellent purchase, Paul. In fact, I just sent a sample of that, along with some others, to my good friend in Canada, the Food Quig. Uh, we do some sample swaps couple times a year we do some live streams a couple times a year um and uh if you were i think it was last week i did a live uh live unboxing of a bunch of samples i got from him and i just sent him a bunch and uh i included the the batch two of the pete heart which um i quite enjoy and it was at a good price are you able to find that like on the shelf in canada paul or did you buy that on like overseas? Real curious about that. Edgerton is McCown Highland Park. Yeah, that's right. He's right. <laughs> oh man. Did his live Saturday. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Unfortunately, I missed it. I was watching the Bucks game. Oh, this ball blare. I mean, I drank this like four hours or three hours into my stream with Alan, but my God, so fresh, rich, just apples and toffee. It's just delicious, man. Hey, Ontario, Canada, Peter White. Good to see you, Peter. 
He says, yes. I'm assuming he's talking about the Pete Hart. Great to see you, ma'am. In North Carolina, with our good friend Bourbon Bounty. I'm going to send you a pour of the Elijah Craig 18 year, and we can do another live. Ooh, okay. Let's do it. I want to be I want to be turned around on that. I've had it before. I uh, I don't I don't think it was as interesting as a uh, the twelve year old barrel proof, but and a little bit over oaked. The twenty the twenty whatever twenty three I thought was massively over oaky, but I would be down to do some Elijah eighteen with you, brother. If you had the new Elijah Craig, the B five two one. I'd be really curious to hear. I don't know if I saw that you did a video on it yet, but I'd be curious to hear what you think. If not, I can get you a sample. He says he bought it on the shelf. Yeah. Should have bought two. Have you opened it yet? Saying hi to Peter White. Canadian friends making connections. <sighs> Man. This is Paul Blair. Fuck. This is the best 43% whiskey I've ever had. Stunningly rich and stunningly complex. It it, it it really puts to shame these higher ABV Glen Farkless is outside. Yes, I know they're sherry. But the quality of this, the rounded nature, it's rich but rounded. Those are just edgy and assertive. This is very rounded and rich, full flavor, long finish. Apples, bourbon notes, delicious. It's a hell of a single mold. I believe Alan, the whiskey friend, had this as one of his whiskeys of the year, like maybe two years ago. I can see why. It's really special. And I'll tell you, I, it's something I might have passed up more than once because of the 43%, but... We got a howdy to Peter White from Ben Demon Hunter. Paul Peter, man, the Canadians all up in the chat. What's up, man? How are my good friends to the north? Everybody having a good night? North Caro. Mm, the 18 is not over oak, not the best that he has. Okay. I'm game. Let's chat. I believe the last time we did a sample swap bounty, we did, um, was it all bourbons? Or did I, did I send you some scotch? I don't remember. We should, we should collaborate though. We should talk. I'd be down to do another show sometime. Um, it could be bourbon or we could do some scotch, you know, bourbon and scotch, whatever. Um, I'll try and think about some whiskeys that I think you might enjoy. We still got 17 folks in, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for everybody for hanging out here on a Monday. I know this is like off my normal schedule, but as you have probably heard by now, if not, you know, I'm from Milwaukee. The Milwaukee Bucks are one win away from the NBA Finals, and hopefully they're going to seal the deal tomorrow night. So I got to go up there and be with my fam and my Milwaukee people, my Midwest people. Thankfully, I live in Chicago, Illinois, which is just down the street from Milwaukee. It's only about an hour and a half drive, so I'm heading up there after work. I'm going to go watch the game, say hi to some good friends that I haven't seen in five years since I've been on the East Coast, and uh, hopefully watch my Milwaukee Bucks bring some bring a championship home to my hometown. So it should be a lot of fun. I have to send you the Bellamy Cast Drink Reserve. You do. We didn't swap last time. You know what? You do need to send me that, and I need to send you... Some of this. <sighs> Bellamede single barrel cast strength, 10 year old. I once, I was too naive to realize how good this was before it was too late. I bought two bottles of it and they were selling it at a place in DC. And I was like, wow, this is great. And I went back to get a bunch more. They had a ton of them and they were all gone. And I probably could have bought, 
it was the same day I walked in there where they were selling McAllen edition twos for 85 and I probably could, and they had dozens. I could have bought 20 bottles of this. And it's too bad because these now sell for like, <laughs> you can sell this for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, but it, it is one of the, my, one of the better bourbons I've ever had. Um, and as you can see, I'm, I'm gingerly drinking this because I don't want to, I want to save it for folks who appreciate good bourbon and, uh, Urban Bounty, I know you do, so I'll make sure that this is included in any type of swap we do. Should be fun. Single barrel, cast strength, yada, yada, yada. This is one of the few rare bourbons I have left. Yeah, it should be good. Anyways, um, I am enjoying this ball blare quite a bit. Mm. I'm really loving the way it like it's changing. There's there's these nice like it's like fudgy dark chocolate, and then there's like uh, there's even some like white chocolate hints in this. Apple, cinnamon, caramel, toffee, vanilla, all the good stuff. It is just decadent, decadent, and at forty three percent. Every 43% whiskey should taste like this. I mean, I know it's 21 years, but we were just drinking a 21-year-old Castro and Glen Farkless, and I'm telling you, it, does, it doesn't have a candle to this in terms of its richness. It's just sad. This is a good bottle. Bourbon Bounty says, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. We could do a little uh, comparison. Uh you know, I know they moved to the age statement one or the non-age statement one. Which one's better? You know, you can do one of those types of things. All right. I'm going to do one more dram, though. I'm going to do something peaty just to kind of wrap up the evening here. So we'll stick around for a little bit longer. I have the need for Pete. What's it going to be? Uh, the boring art bag scorch. I don't know. Maybe some Paul John. Is uh, oh, Mahir is not in here anymore. I have three different ball blares that are three different ball blair bottles that are the top of my favorite list. Oh man, I bet you. I'm assuming you probably have like the '83 or something like that, right? <laughs> no, and you, Peter. <laughs> You probably got you probably got a magical bottle, but I, but have you had the, the the oldest one that I have is that twenty five year old the nineteen ninety. Maybe I'll but you know what? Let's do a drum of that instead. Oh, it's been a while. So these are the this is what the bobblers used to show up like, man. I mean, they were just so rad. You know, you open it up and it's got this like crazy cool presentation, a whole bunch of information. It's just a damn shame that they decided to go to just boring age statement stuff. I mean, look at look at this box. <laughs> look at these, man. They're just like fluorescent and this one is 46%. No, this is Edgerton. It says Edgerton right on it. I think Maybe we got them mixed up. Is it is Inverhouse, or maybe this was Edgerton at the time? Jason Coates, maybe Jason Coates is on here and he can he can tell me. I don't know, but this is Edgerton on it. Non chill, natural color. It says it right there on the label. Forty six percent. This is uh, twenty five years old. It's a vintage statement, nineteen ninety. It was bottled in ninety. It was or it was distilled in ninety. Bottled in. Uh, 2015. 
Uh, and then they got a whole story about it in here. I mean, these presentations were just rad. Just rad. And look at these bottles. Little embossed logo thing there. The nice kind of like half banner. They just look great. Take a look at what Ball Blair looks like now. It looks like shit. It's too bad. I really like this. I mean, I'm assuming people didn't buy a lot of them because they don't know what the hell's going on with this, but they're trying to sell whiskey. I get it. Man, this thing click, clicks a lot of boxes. I actually have a backup of this. You'll, you're going to shit when you hear this. I bought this. I bought this three years ago. I got two of them at $149 a piece. Um, man, have things changed. It's just too damn bad. These were these were great. Um, this is a really good one. This is one of my first five out of five whiskeys. And it's been a while since I've had it, so let's just fucking pour one, right? Why not? Ooh, it's corking. Might need to juice that thing up a little bit. Mm. Rich, subtle perfection. Um, so this was bottled in 2016. Yeah, distilled 1990. Non-chill, natural color. It says it on the label, says it on the box. And it does, yeah, this does say it's Edgerton. So I, I, maybe, Jason, maybe it's Inverhouse now. Maybe they bought Edgerton? I don't know. I thought Edgerton was Anok, Ball Blair, Old Pulteney, but maybe, maybe it's maybe they've been sold. I don't know. Um, so maybe you were right. Maybe it is Inverhouse now. This was the second release of the ninety. I don't know what the first release tasted like, but in any event, uh, we're doing some Ball Blairs now. Gordon McPhail. This one's going down the hatch. Damn delicious. Ah, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. It's just where it's located. So it's Inverhouse that's going to soon ruin Anok. <laughs> like they've done to Bob Blair. I would actually love to know if Bob Blair sales have went up since they went to just boring age statements away from these vintages. I'd really like to know. Now, for folks who don't know, Bob Blair, it's a Highland whiskey. This is not a very like powerful whiskey in any way, but it's not super light either. It's kind of right in the middle. Orchard fruit forward. Um, I believe it's a combination expert of next sherry. A lot of their whiskeys are. Um, they're very refined. They're very rich. They're just kind of decadent. This is what the 25 or the 1992nd release looks like. That is natural color. Beautiful. Beautiful. I probably reviewed this two and a half years ago. I gave it a five out of five. I'm going to be curious if I'd stick with that. I probably will. 100% in house now. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Okay, you're talking too much whiskey. I just poured an Eagle Rare from Buffalo Trace. It's not as thick as what you were drinking, but damn good. Yeah, I've had Eagle Rare, yeah. Those have become strangely overpriced. I mean, I remember when those were 40 bucks a bottle. Now people are like hyping on those like crazy. It's good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but people trip a little bit about that. Yeah, I think you do. It's fine. I don't know. It's not great. I, I just did a comparison video. As weird as it sounds, I actually liked the limited edition release over the committee release. I think I gave the committee a, a three and the limited a three, two, five. So again, not stellar scores, but like a right around average. The price is ridiculous and yeah, it's better than the it's better than the drum, but that's not saying much. I think the black was much better. Not the limited the limited release black was quite disappointing, but the committee release black was good. Uh, yeah, don't buy the scorch. You're not going to be disappointed. Once again, and this will come as literally no surprise. Um, for the one, two, three, four, fifth year in a row, fourth year in a row, the uh, Fecio releases from Ardbeg do not hold a candle to the Cory Vrecken or the Ugadal. 
And them's them's just the facts. I think the last one that maybe came close was the Dark Cove. Dark Cove probably was probably was the only one. Grooves was good, but didn't didn't re quite really. Kelpie didn't quite quite. Kelpie didn't get there. Uh, Drum definitely didn't. Black was solid, but not amazing. Um, and the Scorch is medium. Is medium. Mm -hmm. Don't waste your money. Just buy two Oogie dolls. You'll be happier. Get an Oogie and a Cory. Uh, you look. I don't know how they're they've they've pigeonholed themselves. Well, clearly not because they're selling. They sell so many of these. But those those. Come on, man. Like. As much as I have judgment on Arbeg, their core range is has some serious, serious players in it. Ugadal and Corey Brecken are killer whiskeys. Oh, so you have a 90 second release too. If you got it near you, pour one. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, Peter. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I got these at a buck forty nine. I, I they only had two. I wish I would have bought more. I got these a couple years ago. Top D, I want that bad boy. But oh well. Hey man, we could do a little sample swap if you would like a sample. I'd love to. I'd be happy to send you one. Oh, hundred percent Inverhouse. Okay, yeah, we talked about that. Spayburn. <laughs> All right, yeah. Shoot a sub. Shoot a sub his way. He's rad. Zahn, how you doing, buddy? It's been a minute, man. How are you? How's your summer going? Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. We got good seventeen folks in, man. I appreciate y'all. Folks saying hi to him. Oh, I did a comparison video a while back. I did the Lafroy Ten, Port Charlotte Ten, and the Ardbeg Ten, and the Ardbeg Ten One. Um, I'm with you on that. I don't think it's the best whiskey in their range, but I think it's the best 10 in of the Islas thus far. And I would even throw Kalula 12 in there. Kalula did definitely beats the Kalula 12. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I just, I mean, Anno is like, is probably the weakest. I don't really give care much about the Anno. It's like a diet art bag. It's like Anno, okay, if art bag is Radiohead, if Arbeg, Corey Vrecken, Ugadal, and Ten are Radiohead, then Anno and Wee Beastie are Coldplay, right? They're like the Coldplay to the radio. <laughs> That's where I'm going with that. Just not nearly as interesting. <laughs> yeah, you do need the Ugadal. You don't need the Wee Beastie or the Anno. They're fine. Telex, Telex. If Telex is watching, I'm so he'll, he'll jump in the chat any second now. But if he isn't, he's going to look back on this, and then he's going to talk crap to me about. Um, he loves the No. He's convinced about the No. <laughs> Until we go to war on that, I think the No is blah. It's fine. It's like a diet hard bag. Anyways, speaking of great whiskey, though, this one. It is so rich and subtle and full-flavored. It's just incredible nose. It reminds you of fall. There's an earthiness to it. There's a rich fruitiness. There's bourbon cast notes. And it's all so subtle and so harmoniously married together that every time you stick your nose in it, it's something different. But the core nucleus of it stays the same. It's just fantastic. Mm. This is one of those whiskeys that reminds you why you drink scotch. So much complexity sweet savory it's it's delicious it's the only way i can put it it's just goddamn delicious does it still stick up with that five of five score i gave it two years ago 
Probably. It feels like the thing that's so amazing about this whiskey, it's simultaneously subtle but assertive. It's bold but restrained. Everything hits at the right times. It it has I don't know what the maturation is. I'm assuming this is ex bourbon and ex sherry, but it, it it it's so harmonious that all of the notes play off each other in this like elegant kind of it. This is a more on the elegant side whiskey. I would say it's not. I mean, it's not hyper refined, but it's not like a very raw either. Like this is a whiskey that's like been very crafted, and you can tell by the way the the notes are interacting they're blended together really well blend is not the right word they're married together really well um there's just something different in every glass this is something like this could be a nice it's a very relaxed whiskey this is what a 25 year old should taste like it should be something that you kind of just take in and like subtle notice the subtleties it shouldn't be as raw and aggressive as a certain 21 year old we were just drinking or a 25 year old that's bland and boring that we were talking about in the first hour um this was the second 25 year old whiskey i had in when i compare this is the one that made me i okay so here's the story i was i was at a uh a ramen bar in Washington DC Chinatown and I went upstairs to their like they had a cocktail bar and like a small plate restaurant up there while I was waiting for the ramen place to open because it was kind of a hyped place and they had a bunch of scotches on the wall and one of them was this ball blair and the bartender you know sometimes and you know y'all probably know this you go into a random restaurant bar the second you start talking about the whiskeys behind them the bartender if they know anything about it you're going to have their undivided attention because nobody asks questions about anything nobody ever asks about the whiskeys what does this taste like what is like they like if they know something about it and they're into it they want to talk about it and and i had the right bartender and i was like I was looking at some of the scotches they had. They had a ton of Japanese whiskeys, and he's like, my man, the owner of this place bought a bunch of this stuff called Ball Blair. you got to try this. And, in fact, I will pour it for you because nobody ever orders it. So he gave me a free pour of Ball Blair 1990, and I drank it, and I was just like, holy shit. And I asked him, like, does he, does he want to sell any of these bottles? Because <laughs> I'll buy one. I'll walk out the door. My girlfriend at the time was so annoyed because I was just sitting here just like, you know, I was much more interested in this whiskey that was just given to me than whatever our conversation was. It's like, oh, my God, this is incredible. And so, I, you know, I chatted the bartender up more, and uh, I ended up buying another, buying one and, and, and having another. And I was like, I got to go find this. And so this is, this is 2017 or 18. This, this whiskey was still around. And uh, I was able to find a bottle of it, all two of them. And I've been savoring it ever since. And I, and I remember why now. I mean, it, it's just, man. There's even like a Dunnage Warehouse note to this, which I don't actually know if this is in Dunnage Warehouses, but my God, man. So many dried fruit notes in this. It's just fucking great. I love a whiskey. All right, let me see what else is going on here. We still got 17 folks in, which is awesome. Coats is the name of the 10 in the range. Already had the Cory Vrecken, Ember, Oog, and the Arbeg called. Okay, I see 86, big Arbeg fan. Looks like Inverhouse acquired Bob Blair and the rest of the stable in the 90s. Okay, there you go. That makes sense. Arbeg 10 is their best sub $150 core bottle. Don't think it's very close. Really, over to the Oogie? I'm not sure about that. I, I see what you're saying, but... Ah, uh, uh, I don't know, man. Oogie and Corey Vrecken are just—they're in a league of their own, in my opinion. I don't know. I I might be a little bit of a biased about it, but again, I mean, it's splitting hairs. I think those three are just fantastic core range whiskeys. 
<laughs> Oasis. <laughs> it's the Oasis of whiskey. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Anno is the Oasis to uh, Corey Vreckens. Um, what's another pop? <laughs> blur. We really want to cause a stir. We'll say blur. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> goats. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah, well balanced is is definitely right. I simply just want one bottle of the Arbred Core Range to have the personal experience. After that, I'm assuming it's mostly going to stick to the 10 and the Ugadal Core of Reckon Special again. That sounds about right. That's about where I'm in. Um, yeah, I, I mean, they're worth trying for sure. I mean, yeah, no, I don't know, but you know, do your thing. I'm with you on that. I, I, I felt similar. I've never rebought Anno or Wee Beastie, and I won't. Um, I will buy Ugadal and Corey Vrecken and 10 for sure. 10 is my, probably my favorite just every day. If you just, if you just want a classic Isla whiskey, I usually go for the Arabic 10. Followed probably closely by Lagavulin 16, but it's been a long time since I've had one of those, actually. Um, yeah, just, you can't go wrong with the Art Big Ten. Back to the ball blur. Hey, what's up, Jersey? Not much. Our good friend Andrew Page, beaming his signal from the east coast of the United States, New Jersey. We were doing some Glenn Farkless, now we're doing some ball blur. Um, you know, just hanging out. We're about to hit that two hour mark, which is incredible. I did not expect that. So yeah, just one more reminder, housekeeping. Um, the reason we're hanging out here tonight and not tomorrow, it's because the Milwaukee Bucks are going to win the NBA finals tomorrow in Milwaukee and being a Milwaukee uh, resident for most of my life, born and raised, I'm going to be there for that. So had to, had to cancel the whiskey show on Tuesday. Y'all understand. I missed him giving Glenn Farkless the thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, you know. And probably not much to surprise. Hey! Harrisburg, PA, metro area. What's up? You did see a cat tail. Uh, where is that little bastard? Yeah, I did get a cat. Um, a little while ago. It's been a minute. Nice to see you. I'll send you some pictures. Thanks for swinging through. He's over in a window out there doing his uh, neighborhood watch right now. Yes, do look out for older ball players. Corey equals Pantera. <laughs> yeah, man. Corey Reckon, dude, that whiskey hits. That's one of the most intense whiskeys I've ever had. I think in my review, I described it as like a, it was one of my like rare moments of cleverness. I think I said something to the effect of like, it's like a, like a, like a swarm of hornets attacking your tongue. Cause I swear, man, it is so intense. I think it's because of the European oak in it, to be honest. I mean, I think that that adds this extra spice level that just blows your mind. That's really good stuff. I have not had a chance to try it. I have seen it. Um, I have not had a chance to try it, though, unfortunately. Um, I was... What's that running you guys in New York, by the way? Or, like, what are you seeing that as a price by using? I'd be curious to hear. And did you get yourself a bottle? <laughs> Peter White. Well, Andrew Page just basically distilled down exactly what I said in the first hour. <laughs> exactly. It's like, eh, it's not bad, but come on. I mean, for a 25-year-old whiskey, you know, it should be better. Exactly, brother. It's great to see you, Andrew. Hope everything's been well. Are you still up in Maine on uh, vacation, or are you, uh, you back in Jersey? Hey, if Burnt X Moscow is still here... Say hello. This is Winston, the whiskey cat. 
He is a uh, long-haired Russian blue, which I know for people who know a lot about cats, that's weird. Uh, they're usually not long hairs because he's uh, got a domestic short hair in him or domestic long hair in him. But he's uh, he's quite the character. He's a, he's a bit of a kitten still. He's just around one year, and apparently he's going to be all up on my keyboard. So, all right, Winston, let's, let's, let's chill. Um, and he has the floofiest tail. So, yeah. Looks like a freaking Swiffer. Anyways, apparently he's just going to stand here for a second. Um, what else is going on? <laughs> right? Yeah, he's he's freaking adorbs. <laughs> okay, Winston. Uh, this is uh, this is a little much. I'm gonna have to move you, bro. You're you're getting all up in the business. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> He's not gonna move here. Let go of it. <laughs> oh man, did I just pull out your nail? Are you good? What are you doing? <laughs> oh my God, sweet pea, you're fine. Yeah, everything's fine. Um, <laughs> he's making a little bit of a ruckus here. <laughs> Oh shit! Let me just recalibrate. All right, you getting down? Okay, go on. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, thank you. 150, you said. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. I mean, that's about what I would expect. Fucker. No, oh, yeah, thanks. He's a, he he's wonderful. He's just a little bit. Uh, I don't know. He's he's got a little attitude tonight for some reason. I'm not sure why. I think there's some shit going on outside that's got him agitated. You know, I'm on like the second floor of this apartment complex, so he likes to do neighborhood watch. You know, keeping an eye on everything, and he gets a little fired up. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, I don't remember where I got this. It was. Uh, I'd have to get back to my email. Um, they had a whole bunch of colors of it, though. Um, it is oh, so the website was Spreadshirt, so like spreadsheet, but instead of spreadsheet, it's Spreadshirt. That's the website that I got it from. <laughs> yeah, seriously, man. <laughs> Dude, Jason Coates, you're not lying. My black cat is sitting on my lap and staring at your gray cat. <laughs> and you're back in Jersey. Oh, man. <laughs> That's funny, dude. Yeah. They definitely they definitely get a little uh, focused when they see another cat. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, thank you. Not too bad. Thank you. You're sweet. He's handsome as all hell. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Let's talk soon. Anyways, um, so 15 folks in. I'm going to do one more pour. Oh, geez, actually, I remember that two hour mark. Shit. Okay. Um, yeah, screw it. We'll do one more. Um, yeah, finish up the spotlight. <laughs> that's fine ben some you know there are more important things clearly this being one of them <laughs> and we still got 16 folks up in here which is awesome um again thanks everybody for hanging out on a monday i you know i know this is a little bit moving the cheese but uh We'll be back for Tuesdays next week. I'm gonna I'm gonna get one more pour here. What that's gonna be? Fucking a! I don't know. I think something with Pete. It's really hard to top this ball blair. This ball blair is so goddamn good. I think uh, I'm gonna do another Patreon swap soon. Where uh, Patreons Patreons get uh, get in on the raffle, I'm gonna throw this in there. So if you're not on Patreon and you want to support the show, link is in the comment. Our link is in the bio or whatever section of the video. 
feel free to join. You'll be automatically in it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna include that because people gotta have this. Okay. Sunset pour. What's it gonna be? Uh you know what? I think I know what it is. It's gonna be this. Octomore, 10 years old, fourth edition. This is the latest, the newest Octomore 10. We're gonna do some, we're gonna do some Octomore. As I've learned the hard way, because I was somebody who tried to hate on Octomore. What I've what I've learned is that this has solidified my belief that the most important element to a good whiskey is quality casks, not age not ABV or anything else. And the reason is simple. While this one is 10 years old, most of the Octomores, some of them are three, most of them are five. And what they're doing with five-year-old whiskeys is mind-blowing. Balcones is another example of some high-quality stuff that's young. This is so good. I resisted to Octomore as long as I could, but I'm glad I've got on board. I have a few. I have the 10 year old second edition and fourth. I have the 6.3, 9.2, 10.2, and 10.3. And then I think there's another one, but I don't remember. I wish I could get them all. Kapil, brother. We have to give this man some serious love because he posted earlier today on Instagram. He is also, you're in Delhi, right? India. And he found, um, he found a couple bottles of uh, green tube Lafroy 18, that one. And bought them, which is the best thing you've done ever. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. It's the best decision you've ever made. I remember talking to Mahira about this on 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 uh, on um, Instagram, and he was like, "Yeah, so they got these like Lafroy 18s." I was like, "Dude, buy every one of those you can. <laughs> They're amazing." Uh, so you are in for a treat if you've not had them already, man. Ben Demon Hunter, Octomore, yeah. Uh, Paulim says Guna. Jeez, because not necessarily even all about the cast, but yeah. Right, quality, quality, I mean, quality spirit as well. But yeah, but man. Dude, I mean, you can sit back and chill for a minute, man. You got those, you got Lafroig uh, 18 green tubes. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> You'll find the Octomores eventually. You could probably trade one of those green tubes to somebody for an Octomore. <laughs> no doubt about it. All age really does is let good cast at a time. Yeah, absolutely, Jason Coates. 100%. Good to see you tonight, man. It's great chatting with Jason. Paul M's going with an Octo 11 one. I have not had that one. Um, but I can only imagine it's freaking delicious. Words of wisdom. Zane says, Balcones is really weird. I actually tried it for the first time yesterday. It doesn't say anything like I've tried before. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Uh, they all, all of them have this like slight kind of mesquite note, as weird as it sounds. There's like a mesquite note to all of them. I have a couple of the single malts, uh, sore picks, which I really enjoy. Obviously, like the brimstone was an example of one that's like heavy on the mesquite, but they all kind of have that because it's that Texas blue corn thing is what I'm assuming. Um, I, I do have a bottle. I don't have a cast ring version, but I have the, I have that same one you're talking about. Um, I also have the hundred percent rye. Mm. I love the battering ram. This 10 year old is so damn good.
Man. I wish these weren't so damn expensive. So earlier in the show, I was talking to folks about like strategy sort of of buying whiskey internationally. If you live in the States, smart ways to do it, to lower your shipping cost per bottle, but still get good stuff. And I was mentioning the Glen Farkless 15 as an example of that. These are much cheaper overseas than they are in the US. And again, if you want to get the good value, save up your pennies and uh, use, um, throw on things, throw on things on your order, like a nice Glen Farkless 15, for example, which will lower your shipping costs per bottle, but you're still getting something quality, which is also at a good price. So just a piece of advice, uh, especially if you're going hunting for bottles like Octomore which you can find many under 150 or well under 175 internationally. The only doctor I had was the travel retail 8.2. Yeah. The wine cask was stellar. Hell yeah. The 9.2 that I have is Bordeaux red wine and the 10.2 is Sauternes. The I wish those weren't travel retail, but again, if you go online internationally, you can find them like, those experimental bottlings are fantastic. Like those, like I want to try those. So like, I wish they made those more readily available because you got the opportunity like God, and they're such, they're such high quality. Cause says, I love Balcones malls, but not quite unsure with the corn yet. Yeah. I hear you on that. Balcones peated. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, you got one from Daniel. Oh, nice, man. Yeah, we were just we were chatting a bit about that. I'm hoping to get a sample of that from him soon as well. Um, there's a peated malt balconies now. Every shipper is the sweet spot in shipping value. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. You just have to find that you have to figure it out, you know. Oh. Only had a one ounce sample of Octomore 8.3, my favorite dram of 2021, and I kind of doubt anything will dethrone it. Yeah, dude, I believe it. The uh, the point threes are the Isla Barleys, which I think are always a little bit better. This, there's the, the, I think the point ones are the Scottish. I mean, they're, you know, it's, it's not a big deal either way. They're both really good, but you know, it's like the difference between the Port Charlotte Isla and the Port Charlotte Scottish Barley. If you believe in Tewa, which which Brooklotti definitely does. Besides not liking the price of Octomars, I don't really care for the shampoo bottles. I kind of with you on that, man. I, they're a little bit ridiculous. Um, distinctive, but ridiculous. Um, and then, you know, like clearly it's being marketed, you know, super heavily peated, but you know, like we you can't actually taste the PPMs on this because they're all too eager to tell you about their super heavily peated. This is 208 ppms is it really do i does it taste more peated than like a lafroy 10 castering no but it's because you you really just can't taste it or <laughs> physically can't taste it. ic86 i've never seen an octomore in the wild but i said that about weller in a bottle appeared in my first store see dude you need to will it into existence just say it doesn't exist and you'll you'll go in there tomorrow and there's going to be an octomore I don't know what the, the shipping laws are down in, in Hotlanta, but you might be able to buy stuff online and have stuff shipped to Georgia. I don't know how liberal they are with that stuff or not. Mm. Man, this is a good one. It's so rich. These... Oh. These 10 year olds, they're not as aggressive as some of the younger ones that are lower PPM, which again undermines the whole PPM thing. Uh, but they're so intense and they're just so rich. There's so much happening in this. There's like nice, kind of like almost like a sandalwood Mizanara note, heavy bourbon cask, like vanillas, chocolate, caramels, um, dark fruits heavy peat effervescence smoky on the nose but not on the palate a little bit ashy on the finish just goddamn good
talking, you got some philosophy going on here, man. I dig it, I see. I would buy the 10.3, maybe even the 10.1. You got the money. Those are good prices for sure. All right, y'all. Um, I can't do a marathon. I do need to be somewhat on manner mode as I'm going to be out and about in the city of Milwaukee tomorrow for a hopefully an NBA finals win by the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, so I am going to bid you all adieu with this. I do deeply appreciate everybody for hanging out on a Monday. And again, I will be back next Tuesday for regular Tuesday, Tasty Tuesday happy hour, followed by Telex and I doing some spay burn tastings of a 10 and a 25. Um, Telex will be live tomorrow night. So I uh, hope you guys can stop in and show them some love. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you know, would have definitely appreciated if you hit that sub. We are Channel's getting close to that 1,000, and uh, feel free to hit that thumbs up on the way out, man. Much love to you all. I hope everybody's having a good summer. Stay safe. Be well. Go Bucks. I will catch you guys next week if I don't see you sooner, man.